Hello. Hi. This is my second installment of the wildlife training course. Um, this we're going to hold in painting and I'm really excited about putting this course out for you and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, this is the book that we're going to be using. I use it in my first class. I think it's a great book. It's Drawings Animals 101. How to Draw with a Veterinarian's Eye, which I think is a great title. Uh, really a great book. It covers a great deal of on how to do sketching. I'm not going to really get into the sketch part of this because it's a great deal more to learn and it takes a little bit more work. But this book will really help you get a basic understanding of sketch work. It gets into skeleton structure and uh, wire framing and how to draw on different types of animals. And there's a lot to read and in this book and it's really a great book. You can get it on Amazon. And the link is included inside um, the web page when you made your purchase. So I believe that it's about $19 on Amazon and the link is there, okay? So first thing I do to get ready is I have to deal with my sketch. And in the beginning when you're getting started, one of the things that you can do to save time is you can get a printout. So what I do is I'll blow up the image to the size I want. I do a black and white print. And then I'll just use a carbon paper on the back. Basic carbon paper you can get anywhere. And we place it on the back and we put it on the canvas and trace on. It gives you a general layout of what you're going to paint. It's also a good idea to have a good color printout of the animal that you're going to paint. Now, that brings to another subject. You have to be careful about licensing as a beginner. You have to understand that images now are licensed by photographers and also licensed by agencies that start, as you know, there's other websites out there, uh, iPhoto Stock and so on and so forth, and they have licensing on these images. So it's a good idea to make sure that you have permission to use the image. Some, most of the time it costs between $20 and $50 to buy license to use an image in a painting. And so I make sure that I'm always um, covering myself for that and it's a mistake I've made and so I help you to avoid making the same. So uh, that, that's a good idea to get started with. And there are other things you're going to need to get started with this and supplies. I have a tendency to overstock. You don't need to do as much. You don't need to spend as much money on brushes as I do. But you're going to need basically a large brush for large areas and blending, for background and so on and so forth. You're going to need a few assortments of flats. And these flat brushes are great. Uh, they work well for detail and for fur. You're going to need some fine detail brushes and these can be bought pretty inexpensively. Don't buy the expensive ones. They're, they're not necessary. They work just as well. You can if you want to. I tend to buy middle of the ground brushes. I don't spend a great deal um, on them. And because of their, they don't cost as much, if they do get ruined, you can just toss them. You're not losing as much. The next thing is um, you're going to want to have is a good selection of knives. N knives in painting are very, very useful for mixing and sometimes people paint with knives. I keep a, a fairly decent assortment. I buy the plastic knives because they're more, more um, pliable, they're bendable, they're not as rigid. And so you don't have a tendency to do damage to your canvas or be too aggressive. Um, there are metal ones and you can also get um, other types and different materials, more rigid and so on. The next thing I think that you would, would, would be good to get as a beginner are these disposable palette sheets. These are like covered in wax. They're like wax paper. And they're great for mixing paints. You get the wrong mix, you toss one away, you're all done. Um, and not a lot of cleanup. It's really good. Make sure that you're good supplied with water. Two jugs of water. I, I like to use these mason jars. A good amount of water. You're going to want it for a lot of cleanup. And an, enough paper towels to make sure you're ready. So that, that gets you ready there basically. But a couple of things that I use when I do my work is I have different brought products. This is Liquitex, but this is like um, a flexible kind of medium, basic gel medium. That's a, an additive and a, like, that you, you add to basic colors to make them extend further. It's really good and it's kind of opaque, so if you're using a paint that's a little too translucent, it can help. Um, it does change the tint of the color, which is important to keep in mind when you use it. There's also gesso. And gesso is used to, to improve the surface of the canvas. 
This is a training canvas. There are better canvases that have um, edges in the back of the wood that the canvas is, is tucked into. This is this training canvas, and it's okay to use training canvas to begin. I think it's a great canvas. These are very inexpensive. You can get them at most retail stores, and it's a great way to start. You don't have to spend $30, $40 on canvas. You can buy these for probably 5 to $10 a canvas. It's, it, it's really a great way to begin with. And gesso is used when you coat the entire canvas with it and then sand it, light sand it, it gets a nice smooth surface. It's really important to keep your brushes clean and a lot of people just use water. I use this uh, brush cleaner and you can buy them. This one is um, original uh, BJ brush cleaner and it, it's used by most professionals. It's good for oil, it's good for acrylics, watercolor. It keeps the brush clean all the way down to the ferrule because you get paint gets gathered up in the base of the ferrule here by the end and then that brush is ruined and I've done that many times and you just you just can't save the brush once the paint dries especially in acrylics and this is a great product to have the next thing is is you're gonna want to think about something uh, a retarder some kind of um, this is a product that makes it so the paint doesn't dry as quickly. This gives you more time with acrylics. Acrylics dry fast. And if you're going to work in oils, you have to take a course in oils because there's a huge difference. But this is for acrylics. It works really great. Um, and it, it extends the paint and it makes it flow better. It's, it's a great product. And there's many different brands. You don't have to buy the specific brand that I have. When the, paint, when the painting is finished, you're going to want to clear coat it. And I buy this um, spray clear coat. It's, it's a final varnish clear coating. It's great for paintings. It seals the painting. Acrylic has is affected by heat and temperature and, and warping of the canvas. So you're going to want to watch temperature, but this does help and it prevents damage so the painting will last longer. It's important to be prepared. And uh, I like to set up really neat. Make sure that I have everything I need when I'm started. Um, the next thing is make sure that you have a, a good a good amount of the two base black and white tethium white and Mars black that's good you need that for um, in the painting process also I would buy a good selection of, of small tube paints I buy Liquitex the smaller size tubes these are 25 mil 22 mil I believe 22 mil they're smaller tubes you don't need a lot um, and I would get a basic set of let's say 25 or 20 tubes it gives you a full variety of colors but um, you're going to need to, to buy paint as you go um, don't get the low-end paints or the large jugs of paint the quality isn't as good and you're going to get a lot of paints that are more transparent and this has got a more opaque finish to it and that's the supply for the class um, that you're going to need I would suggest you don't have to have the the fancy easels you can start out with just a basic easel i have one here a lot of people just buy these there's about 10 bucks it's not necessary to have the big expensive easel to begin with um, i've been painting for probably 40 years so i have many easels but to begin with you just need something to hold the canvas um, and it's up to you what you buy i think this is just fine and these are very inexpensive very simple but they weren't just as well. That's about it uh, for introduction. And the next video is coming up. I hope that you enjoy the class. And we'll get started right away.